Top 15 WWE Superstars Who Had Strange Jobs Before They Were Famous If you are brand new to our channel, we invite you to take a moment to subscribe. Just click on the lit red button as well as the gray bell. Why the bell? Well, it will let you know every time we post a new video. 15. Fifteen. The Big Show, Bale Bondsman. The Big Show is one of the most iconic stars that WWE has ever created, but he is another wrestler who started out his working life in an ordinary setting. It seems that his size helped him to land jobs from a young age, with one of his first jobs seeing him work as a Bale Bondsman. The Giant recalled that he would wait outside bars, or even sometimes people's houses, and would be forced to take people back to jail, if he found out that they had been seen breaking the rules of their bail. He admitted that his size was a huge asset to the job, because there was never anyone who tried to resist being taken back when they knew that he was the one who was standing in their way. Big Show later realized that his size could be a huge asset in a number of other professions. 14. Fourteen. Kofi Kingston worked at Staples. Kofi Kingston has been a main face on WWE TV now for a number of years, and has broken a number of records as a tag team wrestler, but he is also another WWE star who had an ordinary job, before he became a star on WWE's roster. Kofi decided to take a job at Staples in their advertisement sector, when he was fresh out of college, but only managed to remain working in that cubicle for a year. Kofi revealed in his book, Kofi Kingston, Champ of Smackdown, that the job helped him realize that he wanted more from life, and that was when he decided to train to become a professional wrestler. Despite being in the business for a number of years, it could be argued that Kofi's current WWE run is one of his most successful, which just goes to show that sometimes it is about putting the hard work in, and letting your talent speak for itself. 13. 13. Sheamus, a technician. One half of the current Raw Tag Team Champions has been part of WWE TV now for more than a decade, and is a former world champion. It seems that his life now is a far cry from his childhood, where he sang in the Palestrina Choir from the age of 13. Sheamus doesn't look like the kind of man who would fit in well with an office job, but one of his first paying jobs was as an a technician at both Symantec and Hartford Life in his native city of Dublin. Sheamus recalled that he was never really a tech kind of person, he was just good at dealing with people. He realized that the job was a good way to ensure that his bills were always paid, while he was attempting to pursue a career as a wrestler, something that he has gone on to do quite successfully. 12. 12. Big Cass, Ticket Broker. Big Cass made a name for himself alongside Enzo Amore in both NXT and on the main roster before his recent injury, which has seen him sidelined now for a number of months after he required knee surgery earlier this year. It seems that this isn't the first setback Cass has suffered in his career, and it probably won't be his last. Cass was once a pre-med student at New York University, but he decided to drop out of the medical program, and instead went on to study economics. From there Cass picked up a job as a ticket broker, when he founded the company and specialized in at Yankee Stadium in Madison Square Garden. Obviously, this isn't something that Cass wanted to do all of his life, so he began training, to be a wrestler after that, and has managed to become quite successful in his craft. 11. 11. Becky Lynch, Washing Cars. Becky Lynch is a former SmackDown Women's Champion, but coming from Ireland to have a successful career in WWE was a long process for the last kicker, who admitted that she started her working life washing cars.
Becky and her neighborhood friends knocked on people's doors and asked if they wanted them to wash their cars, and then went on to spend the money they made on candy. Becky later landed the job in a bar, when she was 14 years old as a waitress, but she didn't wear the uniform, when she was told to you which led to her getting into a lot of trouble. She eventually walked out of the job, and never went back after just two weeks. The Irish star later went on to work in a sandwich shop, where she didn't get on with the boss, so she didn't last very long in that either. Becky also had a stint as a pizza chef, something that she admitted that she wasn't very good at before she later went on to become a flight attendant, a job she revealed has helped her a lot throughout her wrestling career. 10. 10. The Great Collie, Police Officer Many of the WWE Universe will remember the Great Collie as a former World Heavyweight Champion who wasn't able to deliver on the mick at all, and couldn't take direction very well either. Collie had a number of medical conditions that caused him problems throughout his career as well, but it seems that WWE enjoyed having a giant on their show regardless. Before Kali was introduced to the WWE Universe as a giant, and the one man who could face up to The Undertaker, he worked as a police officer in Punjab. It seems that Kali managed to work his way into this career, before he decided that wrestling could be something that his body type was made for. Kali is definitely someone that criminals would not want to be arrested by. Crime in his precinct was probably at an all-time low the entire time he was on the force. 9. 9. Rosa Mendes worked in a shoe store. Rosa Mendes retired from WWE earlier this year on her daughter's first birthday back in February. It seems that Rosa is destined to become another forgettable female wrestler from WWE's history, since she was never able to achieve very much while she was part of the company, except setting a new standard with her win-loss record. Rosa was part of Total Divas for a number of the later seasons, with the pregnancy and birth of her daughter being featured heavily in the show. Rosa came to WWE through the annual Diva Search, but it seems that, before she was able to audition for the biggest wrestling promotion in the world, Rosa actually worked in a shoe store. The former WWE Diva recalled that, while she loved being able to work in a store where she was surrounded by shoes, the fact that she would spend almost her entire paycheck on the shoes on a regular basis was becoming a huge problem. Eight. Carmella, Video Store Employee Carmella is the current Miss Money in the Bank, and the most fabulous female superstar on SmackDown Live, but it seems that Carmella's life hasn't always been fabulous for the Princess of Staten Island. When Carmella was growing up, the first paying job that she had was working in a video store called Big Video. The former NXT star recalled that she was hired by a friend of a friend and the job was quite an easy one for her to get. She revealed that the best perks of the job were being able to watch the films before they were available to rent, but the worst part was the fact that many people forgot to rewind their videos when they returned them, which meant that she was forced to do it. Carmella had to later convert everything over to DVD when VHS became old news. She said that this was then the beginning of the end for Big Video since the shop later closed. For 7. 7. Sin Cara, worked in a funeral home. Sin Cara has become a well-known high flyer in WWE over the past few years, even though it is unknown who he really is under his mask. Despite being obviously born to wrestle, it seems that Sin Cara's first job was a little different than his current one. The Lachater admitted in an interview a few years ago, that his first real job was working in his family's funeral home in Mexico. The former NXT star revealed, that the job wasn't as bad as many people think, since it was something he was already used to. He said, for us, it was normal. We used to play hide and seek inside the caskets. It was one of those things that for us was natural because we grew up around it.
Luckily, Sin Cara didn't remain in this job for very long, since he found out what his true calling in life was. 6. 6. The Usos, Installing Office Furniture The current SmackDown Tag Team Champions may come from one of the most iconic wrestling families of all time, but that doesn't mean that they weren't forced to earn their own money growing up. Jimmy and Jay Uso started their working lives installing office furniture for their uncle. The duo recalled that the worst part of the job was having to be up for 6 a.m. at the warehouse to let the trucks in, but they enjoyed the fact that their job had an end, and they knew that they didn't have anything else to do that day. The brothers revealed that their uncle Yamaka once came to meet them in a bar and told them that he was leaving for Houston that night and it was a 10-hour drive from Pensacola, but if they didn't go with him, then he wasn't offering them a way into the wrestling business again. The Usos quit their job and said they haven't looked back since. 5. 5. Wade Barrett, Recruitment Consultant Wade Barrett was known by a number of different names throughout his WWE career, as a former King of the Ring winner, and once the leader of the Nexus, but it is his life before WWE, that is perhaps the most interesting part of Barrett's life, something that the Englishman has been able to keep under wraps. Barrett came to WWE as a bare-knuckle fighter, something that he had actually taken up a few years prior to joining WWE. This wasn't the job that Barrett kept secret though, since he used this as his gimmick in his early days on WWE TV. Barrett is actually quite smart. He graduated from the University of Liverpool with a degree in marine biology, before going on to work in a science laboratory, and as a recruitment consultant in Van Group's London office. Barrett continued to pursue a career in wrestling, while still working in the science sector. Four. Triple H, Wendy's employee. One of the most powerful men in the wrestling business today began his working life in a regular Wendy's restaurant in his hometown. Triple H confessed that he was one of the ordinary kids in his neighborhood who had a paper route when he was growing up, and when he finally gave up being the paper boy he went on to work at Wendy's fast food outlet. It is unknown how long his job lasted here, but he did list it as the worst job he has ever had, which shows just how much the game didn't enjoy waiting on tables. The former world champion then went on to work in a gym, where he helped to clean the equipment, before he was allowed to train in the gym, and a few years later he was the manager. Triple H worked his way up from the bottom to be in the wrestling business, and he is one of the very few success stories at his level in the wrestling business. 3. 3. Enzo Amore, Bagel Store. Enzo Amore is perhaps one of the most controversial superstars in WWE right now. While it is well known that Enzo was a manager at a Hooters establishment before he landed a tryout with WWE, it isn't as well known that Enzo actually started his working career as a DJ. The certified G would attend a number of events along with his father when he was just 12 years old and was allowed to help out with these shows. Outside of family ties, Enzo landed a job in a bagel store, while he was still in high school, and would be employed to mop the floors, and stock the shelves every night directly after school, when he was in 7th grade. Enzo moved on from this job, to become a piano mover with MMS, which he stated, helped him a lot, when it came to building up muscle, and opened his eyes, when it came to discovering what he wanted to do with his life. Two. Bobby Roode, Dishwasher Bobby Roode became a huge star in TNA before he came over to WWE and become glorious, but it seems that his working life began a long time before he became a professional wrestler. Roode himself revealed that his first job was in his uncle's sports bar, where he was a dishwasher, janitor, and prep cook behind the scenes, and is unsure if he was ever actually paid for this job. 
Root was just 13 years old, when his uncle put him to work, and he recalled that one of worst aspects of the job, was having to clean the bar toilets. Root later went on to land his first official job, when he was in high school at a played again sports retail store. The most important part of his job, centered around ice skates, because skating and hockey are so popular in Canada. Rude worked his way up to management level in the job and admitted that he loved working there, before he left to become a full-time sports entertainer. 1. 1. AJ Styles, Waterboy. AJ Styles is the current WWE champion, and widely considered to be one of the best wrestlers in the world at present, but it seems that Styles has made a lot of sacrifices throughout his career, to get to his current point. Styles revealed that his first job was picking up rubbish on a raceway. He was only 7 or 8 years old, but he was happy to be able to watch the races for free, and make some money. AJ admitted that back in 2000 he chose to deliver water, rather than sign with WCW, because he was making the same amount of money and the fact, that he had the water meant, that he was able to take it to the trainer, and use it as payment for his wrestling training. Styles did later work for WCW, but he recalled, that he thought he made the right decision by not signing with them when they first offered, because the extra training helped him to become a better wrestler. Yeah.